time in Nigerian history today. We are operating two different budgets. One budget approved by the National Assembly. All right, yes, indeed, it does continue right now. Uh, we've got uh, Senator Abamoro, who is the minority leader, joining us here in the studios. Good morning, Senator. Thank you for joining us on the program today. Good morning. It's my pleasure to be with you. Well, some of the budget highlights, actually, which is in question, uh, the total expenditure, which was passed by the National Assembly, 28.7 trillion naira. The Senate passed that budget with about an increase of 1.2 trillion naira. The benchmark of oil price was pegged at 77.96 dollars per barrel, 1.7 trillion to be approved for strategy transfers, 8.2 trillion naira to be approved for debt service. So some of the highlights of this 2024 budget. But uh, Senator Ningi. At least some of those issues that were raised yesterday are part of what we continue talking about here this morning. Senator, can we really say the dust has settled, particularly in context of what Senator Kwame Bamidele said about perhaps some of the reasons why this happened in the first place? Well, thank you very much. Uh, the Senate is uh, an institution and uh, we we'll continue to have debates on issues, especially of national uh, importance. And so, for as long as that is there, we we'll continue to have disagreements to agree. And yesterday, you saw what played out. We, we disagreed with ourselves. Eventually, we came to agree on what was inappropriate and, of course, going by our rules, what should be done. And so, as far as that issue is concerned, for well, now, uh, for Senator Ningi, the dots are settled. But of course, the issues are still there. Mm. I think I would like to start from what transpired on the floor yesterday, or even before what happened on the floor of the House, because I saw you on the floor, very upset, uh, obviously, you know, on your feet. And I think at some point you were even wagging a finger um at fellow senators and i don't know I, I couldn't hear what you were saying but you look visibly angry yesterday on the floor before the uh the, before the, the 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 conversation got to where it got to on the, on the floor of the national assembly when you first of all heard the interview that senator ningi had granted what were your initial reactions that three trillion naira could not be traced to any projects in mm. the budget did you think that that was something that was probable in the budget that you had passed well, uh, I object to the approach by Senator Ningi because as a Senate, we have institutional procedures for addressing our concerns. And unless it be becomes absolutely necessary, we don't have to recourse to the court of public opinion because we are senators. The budget in question was passed by the Senate. Senator Ningi is a senator. Is a member or was a member of the appropriation committee. And so I am from the North. And he purported to speak for the North. And why I was angry was that Senator Kao Smiler, who is the spokesperson of the Northern Senators uh, Forum, came before me and said that. He was going to address the press. He was going out to address the press. On this same matter? On this same matter, while the debate was going on. And I said, hey, you don't do that. You raise issues. We are tackling the issues. We are debating the issues. We are examining the issues. And here you are. You want to go and address the press? Go ahead and address the press. That was why I raised my hands. Because as a minority leader, they took out to my It's a member of the... And NPP. So the minority caucus. Minority caucus. So it's within me. He signed for me to be minority leader. And so why would he not accept my advice? Because as people have commented now, the Senate is already having some level of credibility problem. So why would an individual, for instance, arrogate to himself 
the power to know it all, the power to say it all, and at what time and where, is not correct. Mm. This is not the first time that we've heard this sort of allegations before now. I mean, and budget padding has come with almost every single budget that we have uh, passed in the National Assembly. Um, the National Assembly has always said, look, there's no such thing as padding. Uh, you know, constituency projects are a matter of privilege, and these things are recognized even in places that we have also cited as examples of democracy. Um, however, this was coming from a fellow senator. Um, do you think that even the, the Senate itself reacted in a manner that showed that he wanted to prove to the senator, assuming he was misled? Because according to him, he employed a consultant. He got a consultant to look at the budget, and he found that there was... Three trillion naira not attached to anything. I, 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 even though he's now debunked uh, the initial interview which he granted or which was translated uh, to say that there were two budgets, one that the, the National Assembly passed and one which the presidency was operating. I think the presidency responded to that initial interview and he still said, oh, he was misunderstood. But he maintains that that three trillion naira is not attached to any budget. Do you think that the National Assembly has you know, done enough to say, look, Senator, where did you see this three trillion naira? You know, and maybe offer some explanations as to what misgivings he might have. Yeah, I, I, I think that the Senate did the appropriate thing. I was there. Yes, budget pardon may not be mentioned here now in the 10th Senate for the first time because previous budgets have been criticized on the basis of budget pardon. But this is the first time that a participant senator who was honestly engaged in the whole process is coming out to say what I did was wrong. I'm rubbing it on all of us. I think it's not correct. And let me say here that, like I said, there are procedures in the Senate for ventilating concerns. And in this case, Senator Ningi and Kao Smiler, Senator Kao Smiler, went to the Senate President to seek audience with the Senate President, with the Northern Senators, and all of us across party lines attended that meeting, or virtually all of us attended that meeting. When was that? After he had granted the BBC interview? Well, I don't know whether it was after but, uh, or, or before, but Senator Kao Smiler said that it was before the meeting. But whether it was before the meeting or after the meeting, it was inappropriate. Because you cannot seek audience with the Senate President and the Senator leader, Senate leadership to express some concern and grant interview to preempt the reaction that the, the president, or Senate Presidency will, will have. And so our own concern was that you have brought something. The Senate President has said, well, I'm not aware of this pattern. I'm not aware of this non-existing uh, projects that we are talking about that was allocated uh, 3.7 uh, trillion naira. But since you have raised it, give me the document. Let me go through it. Then I will get back to you. That was, that was what we resolved in that meeting. And the next thing, for whatever reason, the interview surfaced. And we said, no, for us, it was inappropriate. For me, it was uncalled for. So the matter was already being handled with, within the confines of the National Assembly? Right. That was what transpired. Mm. But why do you think he did that? Well, I, I don't know why he should do that, but if you recall his interview translated, he also complained about the imposition of the minority leadership. But as far as he was concerned, it's a house of Fulani. There are more house of Fulanis from the notice who wanted to be Senate minority leader and the rest of them. And so if you put all of them together, and the fact that we had agreed to go through this arrangement and see how we can come out of it, then I think it's marks of mischief. And it was absolutely irresponsible to do that because why would you want to seek to rubbish the institution that we belong to? Why would you want to seek, for instance, to castigate the process that you participate, that participated in? I, I, everybody knows, I know, it's, it's wrong. While the conversation was going on, because we could see that senators were 
divided. Yes, a number of senators spoke up in, you know, just on the, on the, from the perspective from which you're speaking now that, you know, the process was already going on. They believe that their privileges were breached. But we also see that, you know, further than that, issues of transparency were raised. I mean, some people were talking about how, you know, senators, some, people, some senators got 500 million uh, for constituency projects and other senators got, you know, way less than that. Um, uh, there are questions about the take-home pay of the Senate president, how senators are not even privy to that. So it does appear that beyond the issues that were raised um, by Senator Ninge in his interview, there is a, a growing, and some people might say this is political, because I heard Senator Okweyemi Bamidele saying that, oh, there are attempts to try, and try to remove the Senate president from his seat. It might as well be all political. But then, but there are questions around issues of transparency when it comes to fiscal matters within the National Assembly. Do you think that there is sufficient transparency um, in the Senate, even among senators? Well, that, that, is a, that is a part of the damage that the unguided, misguided utterances of Senator Ningi has done to the institution of the Senate. Speaking from the perspective of zones and regions in the National Assembly, that is supposed to evolve a system that works for all, certainly was inappropriate. Yes, as a pressure group, we want the best for the North. But what, is that the right approach? That's certainly not the right approach as far as I'm concerned. And so what it has thrown up is that every other sector of Nigeria now becomes suspicious. The South-South Senators Forum that had become virtually moribund is waking up now. Because they now see a kind of gang up by some sections of the country against their own. That is not healthy for the Senate. That is not good for the Senate. Mm. Senator Moro, well, you're, you're raising other issues. I mean, yes, indeed, this, I mean, there are big questions as to why we even have these caucuses before, I mean, in the first in place. In the first place. In the, in, before now, it used to be uh, the, but the caucus of the ruling party and minority caucuses. Now we now have caucuses zoned around senator, uh, senatorial groupings, or when yeah. I say um, geopolitical groupings, yeah. northeast, northwest. South, South, and all those kinds of things. I mean, right. I've been wondering, is this helping the cause of unity within the country, or is this dividing the country even further? There are big questions around that. But what the question I'm raising is, is questions around fiscal discipline and fiscal transparency among senators themselves. When you now begin to hear other contributions from other senators who are bringing in other issues, apart from what Senator Ningi had raised, it does appear that there are other underlying issues um, already brewing among some senators before this matter was raised by Senator Ningi. So I'm asking you as a senator, do you think that matters around fiscal transparency have been handled sufficiently within the 10th National Assembly? Well, for issues of uh, uh, transparency and responsibility, there's no system that is perfect. But again, like I said, how do you how do you juxtapose the issue at hand, the issue of 3.7 trillion naira that cannot be strictly attached to any project, and the issue of the salary of the Senate president? When did that come up? Mm. When did that come up? And when somebody rises up on the floor of the Senate and says, Senior senators, ranking senators, all ranking senators were given 500 million naira. Mm -hmm. When exactly. I accosted him, he said he didn't mean 500 million naira cash, but 500 million naira in projects, mm -hmm. which goes, if it is true, to the constituencies. And I said, why did you raise this? Is it why would you raise it? So if in one breath, he says all ranking senators, all senior senators were given 500 million naira, and he says, as a ranking senator, he didn't get but Senator, how, how are those projects allocated, though? Projects of what? The constituency projects. What uh, was the modality? The, the, what the template rules, did they use? The rules of the Senate provide for, I think, 300% of your earning as your constituency project. And you prioritize, as a lawmaker, to allocate these monies to projects to your constituents using 
whatever yardstick you want to use. For some of us, we ask our constituents because the allowances, project allowances, will not go around all the needs of our constituents. What do you want? Some want water, some want electricity, some want roads. So this is how we allocate the funds. But outside that, outside that, every office has allowance attached to it. Is it equal? No, it can be equal. It can be equal. We have leadership positions that by the estimation of the Senate has more responsibilities. Because even among senators, they come to you outside your constituency. The senator, senators come to you and say, look, as a leader, maybe you have one million, two million naira extra for your budget. Can you give me some? And so in this instant case, you, you can't afford not to. Yeah, but are senators aware? I mean, if, if you say, yes, it cannot be equal because, you know, not... I mean, rank is certainly something that is very important among senators and is taken quite seriously. Um, and, and that also reflects in terms of how much people are, are located. Are people aware, are fellow senators aware of how much other senators are given within the chambers of the National Assembly? They should be. They should be because it's an open process. Okay, are you aware? I'm aware. That is why I said allowances, project allowances are not equal because... If, I, if, I, if I'm telling you now, and that is the truth, mm -hmm. that 300% of your earning is allocated to you as a senator for your constituency project. If I am minority leader, if Senator Apabio is the Senate president, his earning is higher. Definitely. Do you know his and earning? And therefore, eh? do you know his earning? Are you aware of how much he earns? Well, I, I don't know how much he's earning because how much Senator Apabio is earning is personal to him. And part of the things that we're arguing against here is the inappropriateness of somebody prying into somebody's. Why, why would you do that? He's paid from the coffers of he government. He's paid for the coffers. If you want to know, you go to the uh, finance department and find out. Are all ranking it's senators... It's not for you to, to speculate. Are all ranking senators supposed to earn the same? All ranking senators? Yeah. Yes, they earn the same. Unless you're a principal officer. But he is, uh, from, from what people glean from what he's saying, is that even as a ranking senator, he doesn't get what ranking senators get. Let me tell you. I've been there... This is the second time now. The Senate presidency sometimes allocates to senators, sometimes on demand, from their own allowance. There was a time... In from the from whose allowance? Senate, from the Senate president's allowance. He allocates to senators? Yes. There was a time in the ninth Senate, I went to the Senate president and I said, look, I have this critical problem in my constituency. This money, for me, will not be enough. Please, can you, from your own allowance, give me some money for some project? And he granted 100 million naira uh, allocation to me, from his own allowance, to cushion that uh, deficit in my allocation to my constituency. And every senator knows this. It's not, it's not a secret matter. Every senator knows that the Senate president has more money allocated to his office because of the enormity of his responsibility across the country. Mm. So considering what has happened yesterday, is there a need for the Senate or National Assembly at that to say, okay, look, let's have a second look at our process. Why do some people think some things are not transparent? Are there areas that we should make a lot more transparent from what has happened yesterday? Yes. Upon the assumption of office of the current Senate president, our rules were amended to take care of exigent situations that we saw as pitfalls. And so... Like yesterday was a pitfall? Well, of course. What dropped yesterday was a wake-up call. In the area of transparency? In the area of transparency. There's no doubt about it. And that is why all of us support 
supported what the Senate chairman on appropriation threw up yesterday. He said, hey, look, this money is not missing. This is where it is. This is where it is. And this is where it has come from. Mm. It was there before all of us. And so what many senators expected was that, hey, Senator Ningi, you said that you are consulting firm has not given you the totality of what you requested from him, the review of the budget. This is an interim report. If it, is an inter if it was an interim report that he presented to us, and now the chairman of appropriation has said, this is what happened. This is what happened. I thought that it would have been more statesman. It would have saved us all these hazards if he had come up and said, look, fine, with what you have presented, I have seen it. This money is not missing. It's not hanging in the air. And therefore, fellow senators, I am sorry. I, so, I gave the information out based on what I knew. But now I know better. Simple. I could have ended there. You say that the, his actions were inappropriate. Yeah. But is that of the Senate appropriate for suspending him? Because, I mean, we have several people who say, look, a certain <coughs> senator is protected by Legislative Powers and Privileges Act with respect to the opinion he holds. But we've also seen cases, Senator Ophio Magege, Senator Dino Melai, Senator Ndume himself, who the court then say, look, pay him all his entitlements, and that it was illegal to suspend him. But Senate went again and suspended him. Some people say, look, that action by itself is illegal. Yeah. But I, I, I think I want you to know that privileges are not absolute. You have privileges, you have rights, I have privileges. Yeah, but what I about have rights? In context and so of the court's if decision. Your actions in the course of our conduct infringes on my privilege. I'll voice it out. You can speak for me unless you get my consent. I hear that. But there are court clear precedents in this matter where the court has said it's illegal to suspend the same. Yes, the cases that you are you have mentioned are cases that are are unique in themselves. And they're suspension. And they're suspension. They're suspension. They're suspension. But the rule of the Senate has provision for suspension. Is the rule superior to the Constitution? The Constitution? Is the rule superior to the judgments and precedents that said, look, you cannot suspend a senator? No, 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 no. I am not sure that any court can say you can't suspend a senator. Three cases have been decided on suspension that, of senators. On, on suspension. Senator on the Omar circumstances mm -hmm. prevailing at the time. But the prior, the bottom line was, you cannot suspend them. All those cases well, were decided. I, I am not aware, because I read the rules yesterday. And we have in the rules, if you, if you breach a privilege within the chambers, you are suspended for 14 days or 17 days. If it is outside the Senate and it impugns on the integrity of individuals and the Senate as an institution, the rules are very clear there. I, I do not know of any provision, if you do, you can avail me, mm. of any provision in the Nigerian constitution that says you cannot suspend a senator. You, you, senator Gesham noted that you gave uh, Senator Ninge a get-out-of-jail-free card that if he were to apologize, um, issue a letter of apology to the Senate, that he could be called back. So uh, would he, if he does that, say, within this week, will he be called back immediately? Well, it's, it's part of the parliamentary procedure that if people complain about your actions and they describe it or determine it as a misconduct, and you say, hey, and I said it before, my friends, my colleagues, what I said was within the context of what I knew. But now I know better with what has been presented. I'm sorry if I have offended your sensibility. If he had done that, even if he does it today, if I am the presiding officer, I will forgive him. Mm. Distinguished, I just wanted to quickly highlight, you know, because we also have had to speak with people who analyze the budget on a yearly basis. Uh, and for them, they've noted, noted that most times, I mean, before now, there used to be a provision for constituency projects, but it does appear now that it's, that, that provision has been taken away and it's now a free for all. They think that that process, you know, can, has the capacity to make nonsense of the entire budget, where you have almost two trillion naira being, you know, assigned or allocated to members of National Assembly for constituency project, which is a huge sum, a significant sum. Do you think that the Senate, the, not just the Senate now, the National Assembly might take a second look at the implementation of, of some of the constituency projects and where they are inserted 
in the budget because they think that it might make the budget less efficient in terms of how it has been implemented. Well, uh, there is no doubt that um, there have been some complaints from some commentators and some persons, even some constituents, that constituency projects were not being executed efficiently and effectively. There have been allusions that some lawmakers collude with contractors, with agencies, to share the money allocated for constituency projects. And some of us have called for proper and thorough investigation of agencies of government responsible for that aspect, like the EFCC and the ICPC, which they have been doing. And so, but you cannot uh, place that on everybody. The essence of constituency project is because we are from a diverse in the vast uh, community, society, you have problems that are, are unique to you. I have problems that are unique to me. My constituents expect that I should do certain things for them, attract projects to them and the rest of them. And therefore, to cushion the effect of the barrage of pressure on lawmakers, mm. let's allocate funds for such specific and unique projects. So right. it is a noble <clears throat> idea as far as I'm concerned, but if it is abused, then certainly there is so, need for the uh, passion all right, and the need yeah. to adjust ourselves as the, as the uh, events unfold. All right, as so we wind down on this in a minute, Senator, having the court looked at the rules and still said the reverse suspension of those three senators in question, has the Senate amended or looked at their rules again ever since those three cases are? Because if this goes to court, the same thing may likely happen. The rules of the Senate are a life instrument. They are subject to review, subject to adjustment, subject to amendment. All but the time. nothing has been done ever since those three cases. Well, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, we amend rules given circumstances in which we find ourselves. For instance, in the, on assumption of office, we discovered that there were some conflicts arising from the contest for the Senate presidency. And because they found some level of lacuna. <coughs> in our rule. And I say, look, the definition of ranking in our rule looks a little ambiguous and therefore let's amend it and make it straight here. Ranking this right. way you can contest. Ranking this way you cannot contest and rest of them. And so I, I am sure that the legal department of the National Assembly definitely would have looked at the rulings that you are talking about now and if there was need for amendment, quite frankly, All right. the Senate is open to amendment to plug any loopholes in the process of uh, legislative All right. actions. Well, Senator Alin Dume has since resigned his position as the uh, head of the Northern Senators Forum. So that notice, uh, sorry, Abdulningi. Yeah. So that notice, they circulate all over the place. So I guess we we'll wait and see what happens thereafter, even though Senator thinks for now. Who knows if the matter is died, if we heard the last of this matter. But as they say in politics, you never know. Yeah. Senator Abamoro, Minority Leader, thank you for your time today. Thank you very much, and I appreciate your contribution to the building of a Nigeria of our dream.